Hey everybody, Mike here with EverythingAboutConcrete.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to pour a garage slab addition. This is part two of a three-part series. Part one, I showed you how we did all the forming and all the prep work. Part two is the pouring, and then part three is going to be how to power trial this slab. So make sure you check out, check that out coming up on the next video. So this is what we call a, a monolithic slab or a, an Alaskan slab. We in Maine here we call this a haunched slab. So we're at, we're adding on to this garage that already had a slab. We did that slab probably four or five years ago, and the customer called back and wanted another slab. So that's why I'm calling this a garage slab addition. And if you if you watched the first video of us forming it, you saw that we drilled and pinned rebar into that existing slab to pin these two together and that's what's going to hold these two together and keep them at the same height to make sure that it doesn't have any movement between the two slabs so this this slab here it's got pretty thick edges it's got two by twelves around the outside so it's a foot thick on the outside and then it tapers up to six inches in the middle we're using a 3000 psi concrete with fiber mesh in it for this concrete slab and we also got some wire there you can see you got Darren, Luke and, and Abby there you can see them tugging the wire up with the, the come alongs there every now and then they're getting that wire pulled up and get some concrete under it so we're going to show you how we we pour a garage slab addition you know for this is 24 by 20 we're going to get most of the concrete poured out. It's 11 yards of concrete. They got it all in that one truck. So we're just getting all the concrete in there. Making sure the boards are staying straight. We got a string on top of those boards. So we'll keep checking the string. Make sure they stay straight. With all those kickers we get on there. Those braces. The, the boards don't usually move. <clears throat> we're going to wet set some rebar. You can see the guys setting some rebar in there. Then we'll push that down 2 or 3 inches. That way we know the rebar is, is pretty close to the top or the middle and it doesn't get settled down to the bottom of it where it wouldn't do any good. So we're just wetting and set that in there and just give the edge a little bit extra strength. Probably doesn't really need it with a garage like this but that's just pretty standard for us to put a double roll rebar around the edge. If you, if you guys that are new here, you guys that don't know me, my name's Mike Day. I own Day's Concrete Floors Incorporated. Uh, I've been pouring concrete for 39 years. We specialize in flat work, you know, floors, slabs, uh, stamp concrete. We do a lot of staining, a lot of decorative stuff. We do a lot of concrete repair, even epoxy floors. So if you like all that kind of stuff, if you like concrete, then go ahead down there and hit subscribe. Also, hit the bell notification too. I come out with new videos all the time so you'll be updated whenever a new video comes out all right so we get about half this thing poured out so far Eric's over there magging the edges we always mag our edges smooth before we screed the concrete we pour you know around a, a six inch slump six six and a half inch slump which is it's a little bit loose but we always have a water reducer added to the mix, you know, at the, at the concrete plant. The Batchman adds a water reducer for us. And what that water reducer does is it, is it allows us to pour a little bit looser slump without weakening the mix, so without adding water. So it's just a chemical additive you can ask for. At, and any concrete plant will have that. And uh, it's, a, it's a couple bucks more a yard, but... It just makes the concrete so much more workable, so much easier to work with. And, you know, if you pour concrete every day, then you know what I mean. You don't want to pour it too stiff. Otherwise, you're just killing yourself trying to level it out. Why not use the water reducer and just make it a lot easier? Luke's there kind of tuning things in, making sure things are pretty close to grade. Abby's kind of breaking things down, just leveling it when it comes out of the chute. Darren's running the chute. We get a little bit more poured out before we start screeding. Eric's putting the rebar there around the edges. You know, if you're thinking of pouring a garage slab, 
yourself or even addition to a slab I've got a course down in the description guys that would teach you everything you need to know so you know you can check that out too if you want it goes over everything the forming the pouring the power troweling everything you need to know to, to install your own slab so Luke's over there he's magging that edge even with the top of that other slab and what we'll do is we'll we'll make a wet pad in the middle with it using the laser I got if you know if you need some tools like these guys if you don't have all the tools we do to pour these those are all down in the description too we use mostly all Marshalltown stuff you know obviously the laser is not from Marshalltown that's a top con but the screeds the come alongs the mags the bull float you'll see that's all Marshalltown stuff those are really good tools Marshalltown's is probably you know the best out there So what Darren's doing is he's using the he's using the receiver on that grade stick to to shoot a wet pad. We got the laser set up. You can't see the laser on the video, but and that pad right there he's setting is right even with the top of the board. This is a flat slab. It doesn't pitch at all. It's just flat. And that'll be the only wet pad we need because the screed is long enough to reach from just that one pad to all the edges. That's the best way to make sure, you know, the concrete's level is using a laser. You definitely don't want a slab that's not level. So now what we'll do is we'll just strike a wet pad from the outside edges to that pad in the middle. And that'll be what we use to screed from. So one guy will screed off the edge, and then one guy will screed off that wet pad. We we do what's called kick screeding. So you want Eric over there on the inside. He's kicking his boots and walking backwards as he's screeding. So we kick screed. Now you don't have to do that. You could just pull it, pull the screed two or three times, stop, set back, and keep doing it that way. You'll get it done too. Just be a little bit slower. If you don't know how to kick screed, there's a little bit of a learning curve to kick screeding. But screeding off the board is pretty easy. Pretty much anybody can do that. Even a, if this is your first time, that's pretty easy. And we always ride that screed. We ride it just a little bit tipped on the back edge. We don't ride it flat so the front edge is digging in. That gives your surface it's a little bit smoother surface as you screed. It doesn't tear the concrete apart and leave big rock holes everywhere. We got three quarter inch aggregate in this mix, so you can see it's it leaves the surface pretty smooth after we screed it. And it makes it a lot easier to bull float. You can see how fast that kick screeding is. So we'll get a little more concrete in there up against that edge and then we'll get this second half screeded. Those are aluminum rakes those guys are using too. We call them come along. Some guys call them rakes. Some guys call them spreaders. There's a different name. What do you guys call those things anyway? We call them come alongs. It's got, those have octagon handles. They're really strong, really rigid. But they're really lightweight also. We, we love the aluminum lightweight ones. How many of you guys have poured slabs before? Let me know if you if you poured, you know, if you do this like me every day, or if you're a newbie and you're just looking to learn how to pour your own slab, let me know down in the comments. Also, let me know where you're from, if you what state you're from, what country you're from. That's always interesting to know too. We're from Maine, so we pour concrete pretty steady from about April to sometimes all the way up until about Christmas in December uh, depending on when we get snow but usually you know the latter part of December then January February March 
are too cold up here in Maine to pour concrete outside like this. Sometimes we'll pour it inside if the house is built, garage is built, and we can put heat to it. You know, we'll pour inside, but we do a bunch of other things to keep us busy in the winter, like concrete staining, uh, a little bit of concrete polishing, a little bit of concrete countertops. We do a lot of epoxy floors, decorative epoxy, flake floors. So there's a bunch of other things we do to keep us busy in the winter. Now that guy's checking the temperature of the concrete. He's the he's the manager of the concrete company. So he's just this, you know, it's probably about 80 degrees outside this morning. This is about 7:30 in the morning. And he's just double checking the concrete temperature. They like the concrete temperatures to be usually in the 60s if they can. Darren's going to show Abby how to bull float. This is Abby's first summer working. She's in college, so this is a summer job for her. And that's a new bull float for us from Marshalltown. So when you push it out, you twist the handle to the right a little bit, and it tips the front edge up. And then when you pull it back, you twist that handle to the left a little bit, and it tips the back edge up so nothing digs in. Abby's pretty sharp. She can pick that up pretty easy. You can see Luke's now in there kick screen and Eric's just riding on top of that board. Darren's doing the puddling. Screeding is real easy if you've got a good guy that can rate concrete or puddle concrete. He keeps the concrete right where it needs to be. We like that bull float too that has, it's got rounded edges on it, so it doesn't have square edges. The rounded edges on it leave a lot less lines, you know, when you're, when you're an experienced bull floater, you can bull float a slab like this and, and have really no lines at all. Abby's a little bit new, so she's leaving a, a few lines, but that's, it's really not that big a deal. Get that one last bay finished out. Get this finished bull floated. And I mean stick around to the end you so you can watch how we put the anchor bolts in. This slab's getting anchor bolts so they can bolt the sill plate down. So you'll be able to watch how we put those anchor bolts in too. It's nice when you know pretty much everybody on the crew can can screed. So I mean it doesn't matter who grabs the end of the screed. We just grab it and go. That's what makes things fast. All in all, this slab, from the time the, we started dumping the concrete until we finished bull floating, this took us about 30, 35 minutes to pour this slab. And then, uh, again, part three of this series will be power trial on it. So we'll, you'll see how we, we taper where the garage doors are and then how we put the power trial down on it and how many times we need to hit it to make it a nice smooth finish so you'll be able to learn a lot about power trialing on the next video those three guys there that work that work for me they've all been doing this like about 20 years so i'm lucky to have three guys that long that are really good Makes, it makes this job so much easier. It looks like we got enough concrete in there. We just got to take a few more pulls on that screed and we'll have that done. And Abby's going to finish up bull floating. And then we're going to put some anchor bolts in this thing. Then it's just sit and wait. Wait for it to dry to, to get it power trialed. On a day like today, that won't be that long. It might be 45 minutes to an hour after we get done pouring before we got to stop power trawling. There's a garage door going in front right where those guys are finished screeding and then there's another garage door going in back over there where Abby is so this thing's gonna, gonna be able to drive right in and drive right out of this garage.
Yeah, if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, you know, I'm, I'm on Instagram. We're always posting new stuff on there. Uh, I'm also my Facebook page, Everything About Concrete. You know, I post a lot of stuff on there, a lot of pictures, a lot of stuff that we do every day. And then uh, Twitter also, you can you can check that out. There's a lot of a lot of information we put on that. And then I've also got a private Facebook group called Concrete Ninjas, where you know you guys can ask me questions that are a little more personal about concrete, uh, about pricing, about you know how to run a concrete business, how to get started, accounting, payroll. I mean, how how to keep track of stuff, how to make money at doing concrete. Um, that's what that Facebook group is for, Concrete Ninjas. So you can check that out. And you can ask to join that, and you know I, I take a look at the, your profile and everything, and then I uh, accept you as a member if if you want to be part of that group. If you really want to learn more about this stuff, that would be the group you want to join. So Abby's finishing up with the bull float, and Darren's magging the edges out. When you when you pick that bull float up, it leaves a little bit of a mark. And it's always nice just to get that magged out nice and flat, nice and even. That way, if you know the sun comes up and the sun's beating on th this thing and it starts drying really fast, and it does with that styrofoam under it, you know, once this thing starts drying, it goes really fast. At least you won't have to worry about that mark left from the bull float. Once Abby gets done bull floating, the next step is to put the anchor bolts in and just we're gonna put it in this loop right there. He's got them in his hand. So these are six inch anchor bolts, and there's gonna be a two by six wall, so we put them in about two and a half inches and we leave them sticking up. Depending on the builder, you know, sometimes the builder will tell us how high to stick them up, but if nobody tells us, we leave them sticking up about two inches. That's how easy it is to set ankle bolts. You just wet set them right in there. We, you know, we put them in every four feet or so. We usually put a couple on the corner, and then every four to five feet. Occasionally, if the builder wants them in spe a specific area, then you know we'll just have him draw us out a plan where he wants them, and we'll measure them out and put them in exactly where he wants them. Or if the builder's there, we'll just have him, you know, measure everything out, mark it, and he can either set them in or we'll set them right behind him. But if no one tells us where to put them, we just randomly put them in where we think they should go. Obviously, we're not going to put them in where the garage doors are, but that's it, guys. We'll see you on the next video.